Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Janaballa Bha Girivardhari Jaya Gopi Janaballa Bha Girivardhari Jala Bha Girivardhari Yashora Nandana Bhajajana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Bhajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tiravanachari Yamuna Tiravanachari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. If you, if you can't sit on the floor, you can sit on a chair if you want. Are you okay? Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Mr. Pad Paramahansa Purvajakaya Church Ashtokta Rita Shri Shri Manas Divine Grace Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai Eskan B.B.T. Founder of Church Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Purvajakaya Church Ashtokta Rita Shri Shri Manas Divine Grace Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishnavinta Ki Jai Nama Charja Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai Srimad Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai Sama Veda Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Sri Guru and Goranga. Okay. Let me see. All right, we'll be on page 396 tonight. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Now, Prabhu, just in case, 396, 396. So, just to let you know, it's perfectly all right to sit on one of those pillows, cushions. You okay? Okay, very good. All right, we all set? Everything was, what, is everyone set over here? A Hindi Gita? Oh, boy. <laughs> I don't know if we could find one of those. You won't find it in the, in the closet. Yes, in the shed we have some? Oh, really? All right, so I don't know where it is, but if you do, fine. All right, so let me just begin there. 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. So now I'm confused. Is it the second or the third today? Second, right? Second day of July? July 2nd? Okay. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. On the second day of July 2024 in San Diego, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is. Translation and commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And we are studying Chapter 9, The Most Confidential Knowledge. Text 15, in the middle of page 396. Jnana, Yagena, Chapyanye, Yajanto, Mam, Upasate, Ekatvena, Pitaktvena, Bahuda, Vishvato, Mukam, Jnana, Yagena, Chapyanye, Yajanto mam pasate ekatvena pataktvena bhoda vishvato mukham jnana yajnena chapyanye yajanto mam pasate ekatvena pataktvena Bahuda Vishvato Mukam Jnana Yajjena Chapyanye Yajanto Mam Pasate Ekatvena Pataktvena Bahuda Vishvato Mukam Go Go okay, Shiva. Go ahead. Jnana yajjena chapyanye Yajanto mam upasate Ekatvena pataktvena Bahuda vishvakomukam Jnana yajjena chapyanye Yajanto mam upasate Ekatvena pataktvena Bahuda Vishvato Mukham. Anyone else? Would you like to say? Go ahead. Jnana Yajjena Chapyanye. Yajanto Maam Upasate. Ekatvena Pataktvena. Bahuda Vishvato Mukham. Ladies? Jnana yajjena chapyanye Yajanto maam upasate Ekad vena patak vena Ekad vena patak vena Is that you, Molly? <laughs> this side. Please. Yeah. Um, I mean, she needs a book. She needs a, give, give you a book. You can get it? Yeah. All right, all right. She's all right. She's all right. All right, anyone online? Okay. Mokto chat is online, Prabhu. All right, how about you? Okay, I'll go at first. Gyano yagena chapanne. Gyano yagena chapanne. Yajanto maam upasate. Yajanto maam upasate. Ekadvena pitakvena. Ekadvena pitakvena. Bahuda vishato mukham. Bahuda vishato mukham. Should I go on? Jnana yagena chapagyane. Jnana yagena chapyan. Yajanto maam upasate. Yajanto maam upasate. Ekatvena pratakvena. Ekatvena pratakvena. 
Recognize the voice? That's Chad. Yeah, in, the, in Nebraska, right? You are correct. Okay. Hare Krishna. Yeah. He's coming back soon. All right, let's go on. Uh, I'll read the synonyms myself, just read along silently. Jnana yagena, by cultivation of knowledge, cha also, api certainly, anye, others, yajantaha, sacrificing, mam, me, upasate, worship, ekatvena, in oneness, patakvena, in duality, bahuda, in diversity, vishvatah, mukham, and in the universal form. Translation. Krishna says to Arjun, others who engage in sacrifice by the cultivation of knowledge, worship the Supreme Lord as the one without a second, as diverse in many, and in the universal form. Purport. This verse is the summary of the previous verses. The Lord tells Arjun that those who are purely in Krishna consciousness and do not know anything other than Krishna are called Mahatmas. Yet there are other persons who are not exactly in the position of a Mahatma, but who worship Krishna also in different ways. Some of them have already been described as the distressed, the financially destitute, the inquisitive, and those who are engaged in the cultivation of knowledge. But there are others who are still lower, and these are divided into three. One, he who worships himself as one with the Supreme, Supreme Lord. Two, he who concocts some form of the Supreme Lord and worships that. And three, he who accepts the universal form, the Vishwa Rupa of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and worship that. Out of the above three, the lowest, those who worship themselves as the Supreme Lord, thinking themselves to be monists, are most predominant. Such people think themselves to be the Supreme Lord, and in, the ment in that menta this mentality, they worship themselves. This is also a type of God worship, for they can understand that they are not the material body, but are actually spiritual soul. At least such a sense is prominent. Generally, the impersonalists worship the Supreme Lord in this way. The second class includes the worshippers of the demigods, those who by imagination consider any form to be the form of the Supreme Lord. And the third class includes those who cannot conceive of anything beyond the manifestation of this material universe. They consider the universe to be the supreme organism or entity and worship that. The universe is also a form of the Lord. Om Jnana Timarandasya Jnanandana Shalakaya Chakshur un militam mena tasmai shri gurave namaha. I was born in the darkest of ignorance, but my spiritual master Sri Prabhupada opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisance unto him and to all members of Sri Parampara. So, what is Krishna doing here in this middle portion of this chapter? Uh, he, he's explaining by contrast. Um, the difference between a pure devotee, one who is actually on the path of bhakti yoga, uh, and is uh, aspiring to achieve, or to revive, say, his original loving relationship with the Lord. And for someone who is aspiring to do that, there's no alternative but to worship Krishna directly as, as, as the Supreme Person, and also to do those things, to perform those activities under the direction of the preceptor, the guru, and the sadhus, others who are learned, and the shastra itself, in which Krishna is speaking to us directly, uh, following the practices that are uh, sure to do that by experience. This is, the, this is the, the, the actual orthodox way. But there are many others who have some other path or some other idea of God and who are at least fit into those <laughs> that group which believes in God, who don't just are, are out and out atheists and have no understanding of themselves as spirit and, and are really uh, very difficult to, to, uh, for them to advance. So here is, you remember he had, I go back to this verse, uh, he described, Christian describes himself as the super soul, maya jakshena prakriti suyate satsadasadam, that I, everything is going on by my uh, uh, superintendence, but both directly as the super soul. He's in everyone's heart, he's in all the atoms. And uh, the prakriti or material nature is not working independently. This is this incredible fallacy of the, the material scientists 
who, it's like if you, if you, if you uh, try to figure out how does this car running, you know, how's the car running? So you open the hood and you analyze, okay, we got this, I know there's no carburetors anymore and I'm going back 50 years, but all of the different aspects and say, all right, now I understand. You see, now we, we figured it out. You know, we'll, we, the ignition goes on here and then it, the, the gas bursts and it pushes the pistons and, it, and that's how the car works. But they left something out, the driver, <laughs> the driver of the car. <laughs> this is the great fallacy of the material scientists. They're uh, investigating the material energy and there's, there's always new uh, uh, horizons of, you know, uh, discovery to be made, right? Because it's a great mystery. Just the medical science, how this body is working, how the brain is working, you know, so complicated. But it's not working on its own. There's that presence of the soul, of the spirit that's moving everything. As soon as that spirit is gone from the body, because it's just a complicated machine, and all machines eventually break down. That's called old age, disease, and death. And so uh, the machine breaks down, and the soul is forced to leave. It's not tenable anymore. It leaves the body, and the body is now de decomposes and goes back into the elements it was. So uh, what's, the, what's the most important element there? It's obviously the soul. The soul continues. There are many other bodies that, we, that one can inhabit according to the mentality you, you create. Um, but that's, that's what we've been doing since time immemorial. We, as, as souls, we've been wandering. Lord Chaitanya, this is a beautiful verse in the uh, 15th chapter of the Madhya Lila, the Chaitanya Charitamrita. He's instructing Rupa Goswami, who he had these two main disciples who then carried on and wrote and then others joined them. Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami. So here, the, Rupa Goswami is learning. And he's learning from Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya says, Brahmande Brahmate Kon, Bhagyavan Jeev, Guru Krishna Prasade Pai, Bhakti Lata Bij. Very important verse to understand. So the, the first idea is that Brahmanda, what is a Brahmanda? Brahmanda is the universe. Why is it called Brahmanda? Because it's Brahma's egg. It's like a big egg. Under his egg. <laughs> and Brahma is the, in each universe, there's a Brahma. And it's like, it, 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 anyway, it gets complicated how the universe is, is created. But there's actual uh, boundary to the universe. You know, there's, it's like a big uh, open space in the middle where all the planets are there, you know, different planetary systems, 14 planetary systems. We're right in the middle, the Earth planet. And then there's a huge, you know, 4 billion miles. And then there's a, 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 a barrier of earth and water, fire, air, and ether, which is it's a, it's a big, thick shell on, on every Brahmanda, you see? Now, Brahma is the first created being, so it's Brahma's egg, you know? So, Brahmanda, we've been wandering up and down. Brahmanda, Brahmite, Kon, Bhagavan, Jeev. A Jeev is, we are, but these fortunate souls, they experience what it says in the next line. Guru, Krishna, Prasade, Pai, Bhakti, Lata, Bij. Now, Bija means seed. Bhakti, Lata is, is a metaphor describing the development of your uh, loving relation with Krishna, uh, which is really already there, but it's described that it's growing in the heart, but the seed has to be planted. The seed has to be planted by the mercy of Krishna and Guru. You, by the mercy of Krishna, you get a bona fide Guru. By the mercy of Guru, Bona Vagiru, you get Krishna, you see, by the instructions. So once that seed is planted, and that seed, what does that seed consist of? It consists of, it planted through the words, uh, the instruction of the Shastra and the Guru, and it is a, a seed of faith and, and uh, an understanding of the process of devotional service, at least the beginning processes. That you have to have that faith and confidence that it, this is really what I want to do, so that you'll engage in it. And what is that first engagement? The main engagement is hearing and chanting. That's the water that you pour on it. Just like now, we're hearing Prabhupada's words, we're hearing Krishna's words. I'm trying to explain it to you. you know? So that, what, what does it do? It nourishes that, that, that uh, plant, that growing seed just of, of, of a realization of Krishna. And when that, that uh, plant grows luxuriantly, there's also a whole thing, you have to pull out the weeds of offenses, and otherwise those weeds can overwhelm the plant. It's a, it's a beautiful extended al analogy and metaphor. So then if everything goes well and you protect it, the, and the plant grows and it becomes stronger, and, and eventually 
as it describes it, it penetrates the barrier of the un of this material universe and eventually goes to Goloka Vrindavan, and then the fruit is there, the fruit of love of God, which you can taste forever. You see? You can, the living entity can taste <laughs> So it's a wonderful analogy, and I highly recommend it. If you don't have the, the, the set of uh, Chaitanya Charitamis at home, you can find it on vedabase.io on, online. Everyone can read Prabhupada's books all over the world, as many people want to. And you can find the, the CC, chapter 15, right in the middle of the, of the book. So back to our verse. So we go back to to uh, 10, and Krishna describing, I, under my, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 what is it, uh, direction, the whole material energy is working. Maya chika prakati suyate satsadachadam, moving living entities. Uh, by this cause, this whole universe is working. Then he describes those who deride him. See, this is by, avajanandi ma mudha manushim tanamashadam, when I take uh, the, the human form, I appear in my original unif human form in this world, in this earth, say. Uh, the fools, mudas, they deride me. They don't believe that I'm God. Param Bhavma they don't know my supreme powerful being. Mama Bhuta Maheshwaram, as the Lord of all beings. And there's an extensive purport because Prabhupada is uh, fighting the Mayavadis in this purport. So what's the result of that attitude toward Krishna? And most people in, you know, in the modern age, at least in the West, you know, they just ignore us. You know? I, I take a walk every, every day. And this is my main <laughs> contact with the outside world sometimes. And I do a lot of editing at home. And uh, so there's a, there's, a certain, you know, there's a certain percentage of dog walkers who I know. Early at 6.30 in the morning, actually, they're out there. <laughs> dog demands to go out. got to go out. And uh, some of them I can catch their eye and I, I wish them good morning, as Prabhupada did. You know, there's a few I can give them Hare Krishna. And uh, Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Welcome. Would you like to, you can, just, you can sit there. If you like. Yeah, sure, that's fine. Thank you. Sure. And they're, they're all in their consciousness, you know. I, I got, oh, I got to go with the dog, then probably have to go to work, you know, and all of these different things. They're at a certain frame of mind. I'm just chanting my rounds. I'm chanting up and down the street, you know. And I'm seeing, by being Krishna conscious and just not remembering, the whole play of the material energy as it's going on. There's these, there's these various uh, foliage on cast, they took tr the trouble. There's these trees, they've been there for 40, 50 years, you know. And some of them look like they're really in agony, you know. I try to touch them. Yeah, this, if you call, go around the corner here, you'll see this. Oh, you know. And then some are just standing straight there, you know. <laughs> but all, and their consciousness is very, very low, but there is consciousness there. We know that there's a soul there, otherwise it wouldn't be grow, it would die, it would you know, fall, fall over. So you can see Krishna's energy. How did all of this come about? It was planned out, you know, they built it, and, you know, and so that was a, in which the, the engineers got together, you can see. It's always a living entity behind everything, you know. And it's interesting, they opened up a, a, in, the, in the last year, after I started walking, there was this new, uh, what you, a gym, you know, that stands. But it's not like you just go there and you, 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 you pay your $10 or whatever and, and do your own exercise on one of these bikes or something. They have, they have coaches in there. They got music playing in there. And, and it's open at 6.30 in the morning, so you got people getting there before work, you know. And what is it? I think it's, it's a temple. It's a te like this is a temple for Krishna. That's a temple for the body, right? How can we, you know, they're worshiping the body, working out, working out, so that then they'll have a stronger body, they can enjoy more, you know, you have ladies and boy, young men and women there. So I always, you know, <laughs> as a contrast, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, you know, this is mode of passion and ignorance. So, so this is how you see the world, and you see yourself in the world through the eyes of Shastra. That's, it, that's the idea. And in this way, if you, you don't just see the sun, or Krishna says, I'm the light of the sun and the moon. This is an easy way to remember him. You drink some water, oh, I am the taste of water. You say, oh, there's a flower, I smell the flower. Oh, yes, of course, I am the fragrance of the earth, you know. So in this way, you, you uh, uh, progress in devotional service. You're seeing Krishna everywhere, which he really is everywhere. But he's hidden by Maya. If we don't want to see him, then he can hide there and we won't see him. So this, these, these, these who, those who deride Krishna, their hopes for success are all uh, dashed and everything. They, don't, they, they get rakshasi masadev the attitude of the uh, atheists and the demons. So then he, then he contrasts that the Mahatmas. This is text 13. 
On the other hand, two, Mahatmas Tuman Pada Daivin Pakatamashita, what energy we take shelter of. This is very important. The vast ma- in Maya, we've taken shelter, we're absorbed in the material energy, the external energy, called prakriti. You see? Uh, but here, this is daivi prakriti. That's the, the other one is the material uh, prakriti. There's also the spiritual nature. So the Mahatmas, the great souls, they take shelter, ashita, of the material energy. And what's the result? Bajantyananyamana soul. This is the key. They worship me without ceasing. Their mind doesn't wander for me because they derive so much pleasure by thinking about me, serving me, and glorifying me. This is the thing. It's not that it's, oh, it's very austere. I've got to worship Krishna. Okay, I'll do it. You know. It's like that at the very beginning where you have to get up early and so forth. But as soon as you're in the kirtan and you're chanting and you're with the devotees, you see the beautiful deities and then there's prasadam and so forth. This, you know, and it's all Krishna. Your mind is on Krishna, being attracted to Krishna, who's all attracted. Unlike the, the, the jnana yoga, which is you know, the whole activity, you get together. All right, let's open the Vedanta Sutra to page 485, and we'll go through it, and that's what, that's what they do. They just talk about Vedanta Sutra. You know, there's no bhajan and everything, because the ultimate way in which they see the Vedanta Sutra as, is impersonal. That the ultimate reality is this white light called Brahman, and we want to get up there so that we don't have to take birth and death again. We get free from it. That's liberation. But it's, it can never be satisfying, as satisfying as, as you know, even, even just a nice Hare Krishna Kirtan. What is that? Yeah, the Vedanta Sutra is, is this is the Mayavadi yoga, the impersonalism, just, just desiring to get uh, impersonal liberation. But it's never satisfying with the soul, because we ourselves are full persons, spiritual persons, with a spiritual body, spiritual mind, spiritual activities, which are now dormant and covered and expressed in a distorted way through the material and immaterial mind. But we have the process by which we can uh, revive that spiritual understanding of ourselves in this world and of Krishna. And that's the process of bhakti yoga. And this, this chapter, the most confidential knowledge, Krishna is speaking exactly about that, bhakti yoga. So going on, now what are the qualities of Mahatmas? Satatam kirti yantomam. They're always chanting my glories. And you can see with Prabhupada's life, I, I, I was I had a great fortune to, be, to join in 1973, and Srila Prabhupada came to the temple. I joined in a week after I joined, which is like hitting the lottery a million times. And so there's Srila Prabhupada, and, and uh, you can see in his life, you know, by his activities and his demeanor, that he was enjoying a higher platform. He's over 70 years old. His health isn't that great. He's not, it's nothing, nothing material. But he's always thinking of Krishna. And here he is, you know, at great personal risk, uh, following the, the prediction of Lord Chaitanya and the order of his spiritual master to stri- pri- try to spread this science of bhakti outside of India, in the English language. And instead of going to England, he said, well, my other god brothers, they failed when they go to England, so I'm going to fail, I'm going to fail a new place, so he came to America. <laughs> and he didn't fail. <laughs> he, was, he worked, you know, he stayed, he persevered, and he, he was able to plant the seed. There's a wonderful uh, biography of, of, pra, pra, written by uh, Satsuru Das Goswami, who I worked with for several years in the Back to Godhead magazine. And a wonderful writer, and he had uh, devotees, you know, um, uh, going all over the world and doing research. They went to India, to the place where Prabhupada was born, and they found you know, so many things, and that's in the book also. But the first publication of it was in six volumes. Six volumes, very... And uh, they came out one after another. You know, they don't come out at once. And the first one was a lifetime in preparation, describing Prabhupada's childhood and how he was trained. You know, his father gave him a, a little toy, a uh, Ratayatra cart, and he did, you know, rat card <laughs> for all the kids in the neighborhood. It was wonderful. And, uh, you know, early youth and how he tried in India to, to, to make it work, how he met his spiritual master. It was all wonderful. But then the, the book that everyone was really waiting for was called Planting the Seed, when Prabhupada first came to America. And Satsu Maharaj was there. He was part of it at 26 Second Avenue. So he was, he was writing from personal experience. And it was just so fascinating to, to, to see how Prabhupada went through so much. I mean, I lived in New York. I know New York. The Bowery. The people in Bowery was the place. You know, now we have the homeless. They live everywhere. And all, you know, it's a big problem in America now. But in those days, there weren't so many of them, maybe a, a few thousand. And they all went to this one place in New York called the Bowery. 
they, a lot of them would drink and they would sit on the street and probably, he, 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 had a, he was sharing uh, uh, an artist loft, which is a, a big room like this, not, maybe not quite, this is a little bigger, uh, for, uh, for artists to, to, to uh, paint in, you know, that was it. So this fellow, other fellow had it and he said, okay, Swami, you can live with me. So, you know, so in order to get into the entrance, he had to get the, the, the drunks who had fallen asleep in front of his, room, his, his door to move kindly. You know? And of course they saw it probably was a saintly person, so they said, oh, sorry, sorry, and they would move. And then he would go, <laughs> and then he would go up, walk, walk up. It's an elderly man, walk up three or four flights, you know. And that's where he was living and writing and holding me meetings. Mukunda Maharaj, he joined there. He was, he was a good musician. And somehow he joined, he would go up for the kirtans, you know. The kir kir basically it was kirtan, a little talk, and then vishadam. And then by that system, he gradually got, to, got some followers. And then uh, they realized they had to get a better place, so they, they, Mukunda Maharaj found the 26 Second Avenue in the papers, and they started it in the middle of, uh, I think, late spring of um, 66. Anyway, so what do the Mahatmas do? They're always chanting and hearing. Prabhupada he exemplified that. If he wasn't typing, you know, after he, he, he typed out the whole first canto on a little Emmanuel typewriter with two fingers. Just <laughs> <laughs> in 19 chapters, you look at it, it's, you know, it took him years to get that published. And so he brought that with him, uh, but then uh, they, you know, they, they got him a dictaphone so he could just dictate. But then you have to have a good transcriber. And Prabhupada was putting in all these verses like we find, he couldn't understand the Sanskrit, he just put blank, you know. <laughs> a lot of it was lost until the uh, 1982, which was the, or 83, which was the first revision, you know, you'll see at the beginning here, there was a lot of mistakes, and Jai Vaita Swami went through it with Gopi Pranadhan and others. So anyway, this is how these books came about. But Prabhupada exemplified this, always chanting, always trying to uh, impart into the heart of the listeners the, uh, the, the science of bhakti. And Namas, Mam Bhakti are always bowing to me with great devotion. They're nitya yukta upasate, they're always linked to me and worshipping me. So now, the, the, today's verse, besides this Mahatmas, and not, not the Rakshasas and the Asuras, there are others who worship in some kind of way. Jnana Yajna, by engaged in sacrifice, cultivating knowledge. And this is also like uh, the, the, the Mayavadis. All they do is read this Vedanta Sutra and discuss, you know, the... the, the, the but it's, it's pretty dry. I was, I was uh, part of the Ramakrishna mission for a while before I, I joined, believe it or not. <laughs> and... Uh, they, they had one song we would sing. I remember the song, and I said, this sounds like that verse that Lord Chaitanya wrote. You know, because it was all about, I'm not this, I'm not that, I'm not this, I'm not that, I'm pure Brahman. You know? <laughs> so you know the verse. Lord Chaitanya wrote a verse that says, Naham vipro nachanada patiya na pi vaisho na shudro. Naham varni nachagriha patiya na obanas to yatirva. Kintu projan nikla padamanan napurnam vidabi gopi badu padakamalaya dasa dasa anu dasa. So it's exactly that. He goes through all the eight varnas and ashrams and he says, uh, I am not a Brahman. I am not a, a Vaishya. Uh, yeah, Bra I, am not a, I am not a Brahman. I am not a Vipronacha Narupati. I'm not a Kshatriya. I'm not a Vaishya. I'm not a Shudra. I am not a brahmachari, I'm not a grahastha, I'm not a vanaprastha, and I'm not a sannyasi. Then what are you? Kintu prada nikadapadam. I am simply the servant of the servant of the servant of the lotus feet of Krishna, who is the master of the gopis. You see? And that servant, 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 that's, that's an important aspect. That we, that we, like we try to be good servants of our spiritual master. And what is he telling us to do? always chant Hare Krishna and serve Krishna in so many ways. But that's primarily through, we become servants of the servants. And this, this also emphasizes the, the, the gold standard of humility. Not that, oh, I'm a big servant now of Krishna, I'm the closest, you know. Like if there's some material you know, person very high up, you want to get, yes, I have a very intimate service, you know, I'm uh, the, the secretary, you know, the first minister, whatever. Not bad, you know. But no, the devotee is thinking, oh, I'm so fallen, you know, I'm so, I'll just try to serve this. But that's most pleasing to Krishna. That's the most advanced devotees. We find uh, Krishna's Kaviraj, 
in his, in his, if he's saying, oh, I am, if someone simply utters my name, they get so much sinful, sinful reactions, you know, uh, that I'm, I'm, I'm lower than the, you know, worm in the street, you know. He's actually feeling like that, but with that mood, he's still, you know, writing his beautiful books. He wrote the Chaitanya Charitamrita, the Govinda Lilamrita, incredible poetry, you know. So, but in, 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 in bhakti, the, the more humble you feel and helpless you feel, the better off you are. Because you have to take complete shelter of Krishna at every moment. And that's perfection. You see? It's just the opposite of the material thing. Oh, okay, I work myself up to the top of the, of, the, of the company now, you know, now I can, you know, I have so much money and power, you know. You can see it outside. It's, in, it's po political season, it's insane, you know. So, so he says, uh, you know, Kintu Nikola Paramananda Purnamita. So Krishna is Paramananda, he's su supreme bliss personified. Kintu Purnamita Nikola Paramananda Purnamita, there, an ocean of, of, of bliss. And, and, you know, a gopi bhartu, he's the master of the gopis, Padakamala, the lotus feet. I'm the servant of the servant of, the, the lo of he who is serving the lotus feet, uh, who is the master of the gopis. So that's he, he's directing that. I thought when I finally came across that, that verse, finally I thought, oh, Chris, uh, Lord Chaitanya may have been inspired because he was very close, you know, he was always combating these mayavais. He may have picked it up from that song because this is about Sankaracharya wrote that song, you know. <laughs> anyway, it's like that. All right, so uh, I'm sorry I'm getting a little far afield. So Krishna's listing different uh, alternatives to being pure devotees of his, and there's some merit to it, as Prabhupada points out. But uh, it's not going to get you, you know, the, 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 just performing the jnana yagya sacrifice and uh, ekat vena, worshipping oneself as God, that's also a type of thing, ahanga hopasana. But now, and now Krishna says he, that he is all of these things. In other words, you want to perform different sacrifices, he is the sacrifice. He is, the, he is the flame, he is the ghee, he is everything, you know. So it's not, no point to do anything else but worship Krishna directly. All right, should we go on? Text 16. Aham kvato aham yagya Swadaham aham aushadam Mantroham aham evadjam Aham agni aham hutam so this is uh, yana yagena, the sacrifice, yajanto. This is, he's, he's a, but it is I who am the ritual, I the sacrifice, the offering to the ancestors, the healing herb, the transcendental chant. I am the butter and the fire and the offering. Purport. The Vedic sacrifice known as Jyoti Stoma is also Krishna, and he is also the Maha Yagya mentioned in the Smriti. The oblations offered to the uh, Pitraloka or the sacrifice performed to please the Pitraloka, considered as a kind of drug in the form of clarified butter, is also Krishna. The mantras chanted in this connection are also Krishna, and many other commodities made with milk uh, products for offering in the sacrifices are also Krishna. The fire is also Krishna because fire is one of the five material elements and is therefore claimed as the separated energy of Krishna. In other words, the Vedic sacrifices recommended in the Karma Kanda division of the Vedas are in total also Krishna. You need a book? You okay? Uh, or, in other words, those who are engaged in rendering devotional service unto Krishna are to be understood to have performed all the sacrifices recommended in the Vedas. So this is an important understanding that the Vedas don't exclusively deal with Bhakti Yoga. There's a whole section of the Vedas that have very elaborate sacrifices by which you can worship higher beings, you know, uh, like the residents of heaven, Indra or Surya or, or like that. And if you perform the, the rituals nicely, uh, properly, then at the end of life you can go to the planets there, or at the very least you do it, you'll get a better birth in this, in this plane. You know, you'll, get, you'll, 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 you'll uh, uh, negate your bad karma and you'll get uh, good credits like that. But that's, uh, that's ultimately self-defeating, as Krishna will explain uh, in a few verses. Because you're deviating, you're deviating your attention from the actual ultimate goal that will solve all your problems. You're not, even if you get to heaven and you can live there for so, much, so many thousands of years on Indra Loka, and in, as Krishna will explain in a few verses, uh, Tetam Bhuktva Svargalokam Vishalam. Svargaloka is heaven. 
and you enjoy, you know, for a long, long time with a healthy body, and it's, you don't have all of this craziness here. And oh, I made it, I'm in an interloka. But it's like you got a credit card, you build it with all of the punya from your all sacrifices and all the austerities. And, but so then you go, and then you got your credit. Okay, you can come in, sure. But they pu keep punching that card, and eventually, like in any credit card, sorry, Mr. Doliner, do you have another card? This one is, uh, I don't know. <laughs> But there's no other card, and you have to come back down. <laughs> it's like you, you, you save up, you save up, you save up to go to, uh, you know, a, a, a vacation. People come here, you know, but they could also go to Hawaii, say, you know. But it's limited, it's time, you know, and then you have to go back to work, right? <laughs> so you fall down again. And ultimately, as Krishna says, gatagatam kama kama labhante, you're just coming and going, coming and going. You're not actually making any progress back to God. That's also a materially motivated activity. You know, just like advancing in this, this plane is, advancing to the higher planets is, is ultimately a waste of time. So here uh, Krishna is uh, now identifying himself with all of these um, paraphernalia for worship. He says, you're, you're, you're ignoring that I am making these things, giving you facility for that. But you're still deviating from your actual goal in life, which is to, to, to completely eradicate from your heart uh, all of these material desires and to have this one desire, which is your real natural desire, and that is to serve Krishna with love. And it, 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 we, 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 on our material consciousness, we can't see how that's... <clears throat> you know, the end of all the old, uh, aspirations. But when you think about it, that includes, as very insignificant, liberation. You're not coming back again to suffer birth, old age, disease, and death. Think about it. How much effort is, is spent trying to counteract old age, disease, and death. As you get older, it becomes very, very prominent in your life, right? And so, so that's taken care of. That's a byproduct of advancement in bhakti. And, and the, uh, Krishna is so kind, and personally, if you advance just a little bit, you don't have to even complete the whole course. Whatever you do in the way of service to Krishna, even just maybe uh, half an hour in some Bhagavad Gita class at Pacific Beach or something, you know, that's it, you know? <laughs> you're not getting another, you're, not, you're getting another human body. That in itself is like <laughs> such a boon, you know? But why not really, you know, focus on seeing how much advancement we can make? Maybe this lifetime, maybe a couple of more lifetimes. What is that compared to the 10 million lifetimes we've already suffered in this world? Read the fifth cano, the last chapter of the fifth cano. It's all about hellish punishments that you can have. I worked on that chapter. I remember working on it late at night because we were racing to get the books done. 17 books in two months. So there's Dravida Das, two, two, less than two years in the movement. Of course, my other assignment was working on the Aunty Leela of the Chaitanya Charitam. And there was <laughs> but there it was, you know, oh my God. You know, if you, if you drink, then you'll have to, you know, drink, uh, you know, uh, uh, molten iron or something, you know. <laughs> God, for 10,000 years. It seems like that. It's on a subtle plane, but it's as if you were feeling. <laughs> it's supposed to be a uh, warning, you know. But it's not like that's our whole religion, trying to scare you into worship God. No, 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 you know. This is just to tell you the reality out there and how you can be free of that uh, and, and much more if you just practice Krishna consciousness. So we're getting kind of late. Any uh, discussion on this? Krishna is saying, what, what did we do? We did 16? All right, let me, let me give you 17. Pitaham asya jagato Mata data pitamaha Vedyam pavitram omkara Riksama yajarevacha I am the father of this universe, the mother, the support, and the grandsire. I am the object of knowledge, the purifier, and the syllable Om. I am also the Rig, the Sama, and the Yajurvedas. <coughs> Purport. The entire cosmic manifestations, moving and non-moving, are manifested by different activities of Krishna's energy. In the material existence, we create different relationships with different living entities who are nothing but Krishna's marginal energy. Under the creation of Prakriti, some of them appear as our father, mother, grandfather, creator, etc. But actually, they are parts and parcels of Krishna. 
As such, these living entities who appear to be our father, mother, etc., are nothing but Krishna. In this verse, the word data means creator. Not only are our father and mother parts and parcels of Krishna, but the creator, grandmother, and grandfather, etc., are also Krishna. Actually, any living entity being part and parcel of Krishna is Krishna. All the Vedas, therefore, aim only toward Krishna. Whatever we want to know through the Vedas is but a progressive step toward understanding Krishna. That subject matter, which helps us purify our constitutional position, is especially Krishna. Similarly, the living entity who is inquisitive to understand all Vedic principles is also part and parcel of Krishna, and as such is also Krishna. In all the Vedic mantras, the word Om, called prana pranava, is a transcendental sound vibration and is also Krishna. And because in all the hymns of the four Vedas, Sama, Yajur, Rig, and Atarva, the pranava or omkar is very prominent, it is understood to be Krishna. So, where is there not Krishna? You know, is, can you point to a place, Mukunda? Where is Krishna not there? <laughs> He's there. <laughs> what about this stone floor? Well, besides it being the floor of a temple, which is you know, obviously connected to Krishna, earth, water, fire, air, ether, bhuma, apo, onalo, vayu, kang, mano, buddha, deva, cha, ahankara, iti, yame, binna, pakadarashada. This is in the seventh chapter where Krishna is, you know, say, all right, I told you this, this Ashtanga Yoga, I agree, it's too hard to practice, you know, in this age. And even Arjun rejected it. Go alone and just, you know, by force control the mind. And too, it's too powerful. But here's a practical thing. So he's saying, okay, let's look, analyze, what, what do we got here? We got solid matter, right? We got liquids, we got air, we got fire, electricity, right? And then we have the space where everything is, that's a subtle element, ether. And then we have internal elements, mind, intelligence, ego. These eight are the, the, uh, the, the, the uh, ingredients which make up everything we see in this world. Different, different uh, uh, formulations and different percentages like that. Now, then the question is, well, how did it all come together in such a wonderful creation? You know, where did our, our body, is, is, there must be an intelligence behind it, Right? That's uh, intuitive. You see a watch falling on the ground, you don't think it grew up as part of the, the lawn, right? It was dropped there. <laughs> and it has so much intelligence behind it, the creation, right? So wherever you see organization and, and things happening like bodies, you know, there's a great intelligence behind it. Where is that intelligence? That intelligence belongs to God. You know. Now he expands, he gets Brahma, he has four heads, he has so much to do, you know, he has so many headaches. To try to, <laughs> yeah. If you read the second canto, it's populating this universe. It's like it's like two steps forward, one step back, right? <laughs> Not so easy, but uh, still, it takes a lot of intelligence to organize all of this, and that originally comes from Krishna, and he is overseeing it. Maya Jakshena Pakadisuya. So that's where that's who we have forgotten. That's who we want to re progressively remember. And the wonderful thing about this age is that it's been made super easy and simple. You just start chanting Hare Krishna mantra seriously, understanding that this is the great blessing of this age. What is that verse? Begins, there's two verses in the Upanishads. You probably know the first one, Brenda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. <laughs> Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. How about the next? Iti shorshikam nam nam, kalikal mishanashanam, natak padatarobaya, sarva vedeshu drishite. Now, the Upanishads are part of the Vedas. These are very, very ancient, even more than the, than the Bhagavatam. So it says, these 16 words, you see them there, 16 words, uh, names of Krishna, of God, are the best way to counteract the ignorance, the evils of the present age of Kali. Iti shodashikam namnam Kali kalmasha nashanam. Nashanam means destruction. Kalmasha means the impurities and the, the negativities of this age, bad thing. But this is nashanam, destroys all that. It makes your life suspicious. Natak padataropaya, you can search throughout the Vedas, but you won't find a better means of counteracting than, than this means. And this was the central teaching of Lord Chaitanya. He spread this chanting. M much, much of his work in South India, he was just <laughs> dancing and chanting on the street. And he was so fulgent and so blissful and so charismatic that people would come and chant with him and they would get pure love of God 
from, because he's God himself. And they would go back to their villages and spread the chanting in this way. They spread, you know. but, but that same mantra, that same practice, is, is the essence of what this Krishna consciousness movement is all about. And so uh, everything is there. It, it, it purifies the heart. That's the first. You want liberation? That's the first line of the first verse of the Shikshastika. Cheto darpana marjanam, bhava mahada vagni nirvapanam. That's liberation, right? By this sankirtan congregational chanting, uh, you, you purify the mirror of the, of the mind, of the heart. You can see things as they are. Uh, you can see yourself and Krishna there. And the blazing fire of birth and death, Baba Maha Dav Agni, is nirvapanam, is extinguishes. That's the first step. But as you go on, you realize that that's included, that's, that's included in the development of the attraction for God and love for Krishna. And when you, more you learn about Krishna, you say, he is supremely lovable. Why? What is it, what is it that you know, the attraction, he, Krishna means all attractive. The beauty, the opulence, the, the cleverness in his speaking with his friends, you know, the jokes and the whole thing, you know. And uh, I'll give you one sample verse because we have a couple of minutes. This is the verse of Rupa Goswami. He says, Now you can practically hear Krishna dancing, right? So it's all about Krishna dancing. His flute emanates in chanting sounds for the girls whose love for him abounds. Bow down to the cloud complexion, Lord, who's dancing upon the Kalindi shore. Now, I, my English is, you know, one hundredth of the Sanskrit. But the, 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 the writings of the Goswami, that's Rupa Goswami, you know. And uh, he, here's, here's one about the holy name. This is uh, Buddy Narayan Swami's favorite. So there's, uh, you learn about Lord Chaitanya and his associates in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, and one of the most important ones is Haridas Thakur. Haridas Thakur was born in a Muslim family, but he became a great devotee, and all he did was chant Hare Krishna all day. Imagine, we're chanting our little 16 rounds, right? And sometimes you don't finish it in two hours, it takes about two hours of the day, and so many things, okay, we, we get through. You probably first had 64 rounds back at the, at the, at the storefront if you want to get initiated. So, okay, Prabhupada, we'll try it. And they, they came back to him, Prabhupada, if you want us to do anything else, you have, you have to reduce it. All right, 32 minimum. I go back to Prabhupada, it's still too much. 16, absolute minimum. <laughs> so that's how we got the 16 rounds. So this Haridas Taku chanted 192 rounds every day. <laughs> you can imagine that, 300,000 names, more than 300,000 if you multiply it out. So he became the Nama Acharya, the, the Acharya for chanting the holy names. So he had a discussion with um, the Raghunath Das Goswami. He, he was then just a boy. He was like 18 or 15. And his father, they were also great devotees, Hiranya Majumdar, like that, about the holy name. So there was also a smart Brahman there. I always said the smart Brahmins are not so smart, right? The smart Brahmins are too much hung up on the rituals. <laughs> So he was a tax collector. So Haridas said, yes, just by chanting one name, you can get liberation. He said, that can't be, you know? And if it's not true, I'll cut off your nose. I was like, oh, my God. There was a big offense. You know, they kicked this guy out. And they said, Haridas, please explain to us how by chanting one name. You can. So he chanted this verse and then gave an explanation. So I took the name, I took that verse and its explanation. I made it in a little poem. So here's the verse. It's a far out verse. You know this one? Now that's the actual beat of the Sanskrit. I didn't make it up. Of course, you should probably chant a little slower. But anyway, so here's the verse and its meaning. And it's, it's, it's like, when, now, you have to go back 500 years. There's no electricity. When the, when the moon is new, it's, you know, there's no moon, and the sun is way, like, you know, completely set, it gets very dark. Very, very dark. <laughs> and people used to get a lot more sleep in those days. I mean, they take rest 12 hours. You know. So anyway, here's the thing. When the moon is invisible, withered to nil, and the sun is long gone from the sky, then an ocean of darkness envelops this world, and the timorous fear they might die. But that thick pall of gloom is at once swept away when the first signs of sunrise appear. And the dawning of day gives assurance to all that in truth there is nothing to fear. In a similar way, when illusion holds sway, 
and the soul has forgotten his Lord, then the darkness of ignorance covers his heart. Sin and suffering are his reward. But as soon as he says Krishna's name even once in a manner that doesn't offend, then his ignorance flees like the darkness at dawn, and his sin and his suffering end. So there's nothing to fear, for the son of the name has appeared with his powers divine. In your heart may that son, benedictive for all, become fixed and eternally shine. So on that note... Thank you for attending. We'll uh, do it again tomorrow. You're all invited. I don't know if they're going to have the tacos, but we will have the class. Hare Krishna, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. And yes, we will have darshan in three minutes. I don't know if my friend uh, Ram Vilas is here tonight.